Okay, so uh, most of the time you're probably defending against relatively natural systems such as 2 over 1, Standard American, ACOL, and so on. Defending against precision does need uh, some adjustment because a lot of the openings are not natural or not fully natural. Um, and uh, so your expectation of what your opponents may or may not have may not be what you're used to. Okay, so I mean, just my own tactics against any strong club system, uh, whether it's OCP or normal precision or some other strong club, uh, or even a strong diamond, uh, is that if I have a decent hand, especially one with defensive strength, I tend to stay quiet. Um, I tend to intervene when I have either decent values and distribution, or distribution without decent values. Uh, if I've got decent values and distribution, I'll tend to go a little bit more slowly. Uh, if I have uh, decent distribution but without lots of values, in other words, a weak preemptive style of hand, I preempt as far as possible. And that's broadly uh, the tactics I would suggest to you. Um, if I've got a, defen a mainly defensive hand, that doesn't have much in the way of attacking strength. Uh, better not to tip the precision pair off to where all the strength with their opponents lies, has been my experience. Obviously, there are times when you do have to intervene, but uh, most of the time I tend to stay quiet if I've got that kind of a hand. So if you're going to intervene preemptively, then it needs to be preemptive. Okay? The, th the one thing that precision uh, suffers from is people stealing their bidding space. And that's true of uh, super precision in particular, where you've got asking bids, um, because the precision pairs bidding is even more artificial than if they're playing standard wave precision and uh, so if you're going to preempt consume as much of their space as you possibly can um, as you'll see in a bit when I explain a little bit about how OCP defends against uh, interference in asking bid sequences, you'll see that cheap interference hardly disrupts us at all and very often ends up gaining us bidding space rather than removing it. But on the other hand, if you've got a sequence such as an opening of one club and a four spade overcall, very, very difficult for a precision pair to have a, a, a serious auction after that. So that's what I mean by consuming their bidding space. Okay, so, uh, I mean, this isn't a plug for OCP, but just a warning, really. If you're playing against an OCP pair, um, OCP's approach to interference in asking bid sequence has been developed and honed um, since the uh, the mid 80s so you're talking 30 odd years and uh, in, in fact we've just done a major revamp of it just a couple of weeks ago um, uh, so it's very sophisticated and if you do uh, lead directing doubles cheap doubles uh, they definitely gain us bidding space. And so really you should actually try and avoid those. Um, most decent precision pairs do have uh, a relatively sophisticated um, defences against interference. 
Um, and that doesn't mean that you can interfere with impunity because uh, you know most precision pairs will give themselves the ability to penalize you if you go too far. So you do need to have an eye to the vulnerability. Um, there are times when it's worth going to the limit or beyond and times when it pays to be a little bit more cautious because uh, they will usually have the ability to penalize you certainly at the three or four level and OCP does. Okay so that's a general approach. Any, any questions so far on just the sort of general approach that I've outlined there before we start looking at uh, particular openings and how you should deal in general with those openings. Okay, good to see you've all been taking the tranquilizers. <coughs> Right, so we'll start off with one diamond. I'm going to leave one club for a bit. Um, we'll start off with one diamond because it's not just the one club openings that you need to think about, um, but most of the precision openings, the intermediate ones, bear some thought. Okay, so uh, different precision pairs, different precision variations have a different approach to the one diamond opening. Uh, in classic precision, the one diamond might be as small as a doubleton, uh, unlikely to be less than that if they're playing classic precision. Um, but one diamond is a catch-all opening. It tends to show any uh, intermediate 11 to 15 opening that doesn't have the requirements for an opening of one heart, one spade, one no trump, two clubs, or two diamonds. That's in classic precision. Okay. Um, so it doesn't promise diamonds. So your approach to um, the diamond suit in particular may need to change subtly. Uh, not completely, because very often they will have diamonds, and and my own approach is that basically I assume that they have got diamonds until uh, they show otherwise um, and so things like take out doubles are take out doubles of diamonds um, even though they may not have diamonds and may have the other suits because uh, you can tie yourself in knots if you uh, if you always assume that they don't have diamonds Okay, in OCP, um, the diamond opening actually could potentially even be a void. Very rarely, but it could potentially be a void. It can certainly be a singleton, um, because 4414 hands with a singleton diamond are routinely open with one diamond. Okay, so with both both majors, I tend to double. Um, uh, but very often it's worth just passing the first time round, and then uh, once the bidding comes back to you, you'll probably have a slightly clearer idea of, of the one diamond opener shape. Um, the uh, With classic precision... The one diamond opening, the emphasis is normally on trying to find somewhere else to play, i.e. a major if you've got a 4-4 fit there, or playing in no trumps, uh, or even in clubs. Um, but it's not impossible they're going to end up playing in diamonds. But uh, initially, uh, you tend to look for a 4-4 major fit in particular. Um, so again, that, that may change your approach okay so if you have diamonds in in defense and they open one diamond 
I personally, I would always pass. Because uh, if you if you bid two diamonds, the likelihood is that your agreements are going to be that that's Michael's or um, some similar kind of two-suited overcall. If it goes one diamond, two diamonds. Uh, but if you pass the first time and then come in with diamonds, it's inevitably going to be showing diamonds. Um, very often, you'll find that the one diamond opening isn't forcing. And so passing with diamonds can uh, be a benefit to you if it ends up going one diamond, pass, pass, pass. Uh, and you can end up playing in your chump suit. Um, but bear in mind that that will normally be when responder is fairly weak. If they've got eight plus, they're likely to be saying something. So, I, I mean, again, my own approach is I tend to treat the one diamond opening as if it was natural, even though I'm aware that it potentially isn't. Um, uh, so, overcalls are normal. Two diamonds I would treat as Michael. Um, and double is essentially a takeout double. But as I said above, uh, I would normally take it as showing the majors um, in particular. Because opener's hand, if they've opened one diamond, will be weighted towards uh, the miners, or they will be balanced. Um, if they're not balanced, the likelihood is that they've got at least um, probably nine cards in the miners. So the majors are there for you for your taking, potentially. Okay, any questions so far on one diamond? Again, that's just a sort of general consideration. Uh, obviously, it, it pays dividends to find out exactly what your ops one diamond actually shows. Um, and you and your partner may want to have um, a couple of different approaches up your sleeve, depending on what their one diamond opening does actually promise. Okay, if there's no um, questions on one diamond, we'll move on to general considerations against two diamonds. Uh, now, to start with, we're going to just deal with the sort of classic precision two diamond opening. Even though lots of pairs don't use it these days, if, they're, if your ops are playing, for example, a multi, um, then there's whole loads of different defences against the multi. Um, and there are lots of uh, different things that two diamonds can be. A lot of precision pairs abandon the, the classic precision two diamonds um, because it doesn't come up very often. Um, and they just open those hands with, uh, with one diamond. Okay, so the classic precision two diamonds is showing 11 to 15 with 4, 4, 1, 4 shape and a singleton diamond. Um, so defending against that is fairly easy because opener's hand is a completely open book. Um, uh, it is generally forcing in precision if you're playing that style of opening. Um, uh, I tend not to get involved unless I've got diamonds because every other suit is going to split badly. Uh, you know that um, opener's got four hearts, four spades, and four clubs. Uh, so the chances of any of those suits being suitable for you to play in is not impossible, but it's relatively unlikely because you know it's going to split badly. So I did say... So I did say there are times when you don't care if ops have four trumps. Um, if you've got a solid suit that you can just play from your hand, um, then go for it. Uh, a 
Okay, I'm not actually aware that there is a conventional defence against a classic precision two diamonds. Um, uh, if there is one, I'd be glad to hear of it. Um, but uh, I don't think anybody's bothered to come up with one, because, like I said, um, Opener's Hand is a completely open book, and natural methods will normally uh, suffice to combat it when you know exactly what one defender's got. And you can normally get a fairly good idea what the other defender has um, accordingly, because the two-diamond opening is normally considered forcing if you're playing classic precision. Um, responder might pass with about seven or eight diamonds uh, and a weak hand, but otherwise they're going to be bidding something and trying to find a fit somewhere else. Okay, any questions about uh, the classic precision two diamonds and how to approach it? Okay, so for any latecomers, if you're aware of any latecomers who uh, are saying they don't have voice, just direct them to that. Uh, just open up a, um, just get them to open up a spare browser page. Uh, Naomi's um, not okay. I mean, she's here, uh, but her breathing is really still very bad. Um, but she was out of hospital by uh, Monday night, or was it Sunday night even, last week. Um, but she, her breathing is still very bad. Um, she's having a bit of a miserable time at the moment. Uh, she's in the middle of eating her dinner at the moment. Okay, on to the OCP two diamonds, which is very different. Okay, so OCP doesn't use classic precision, and if you're playing in IAC, um, the most likely version of precision that you're going to meet is OCP. Um, uh, because there's about um, 20 or 30 people who regularly use uh, OCP, um, and they're all IAC members, so you may come up against them sometimes. So the OCP diamond, two diamond opening, doesn't show 11 to 15 with 4414 shape. Thank you, Ellie. Um, okay, so the OCP two diamond opening is 16 to 23 high card points with any 4441 distribution. Okay, so it's a it's a really very different kettle of fish. You know, opener is 4441, but you also know they've got anything from a a reasonable 16 count up to a rock crushing 23 count. Um, so really, it's normally sensible to wait and see against the OCP2 diamond, um, because very often it's the case that opener is going to end up showing a roughly how strong they are. It's in two ranges of 16 to 19 and 20 to 23. Um, and also where their singleton is. Um, if you want to intervene, then be my guest. Uh, personally, I tend to stay quiet until I know, and then see if I want to defend or um, start competing in openers singleton. Again, same consideration, really, as with the um, the classic two diamond opening. If you know that opener's got four 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 one distribution, uh, if you don't know where their singleton is, um, you could be uh, ending up uh, making a rod for your own back. Uh, so, like I said, I, I would tend to wait until you know, and very often you will find out where opener's um, singleton is. Not always. Um, and some of the changes that we made to the OCP two diamond opening last year um, uh, can actually uh, make it more difficult to defend against. Um, I, I can't really spend that much time on the two diamond opening, but um, there are some sequences where... Uh, Uh, responder will, will make a two-way transfer and then pass whatever opener bids, rebids, um, 
So unless you're on the ball, you may end up, and that would be if responder is naught to four. So if you're not prepared to to come in, uh, it can be more difficult for you, um, because although you may know that responder does or doesn't have um, a four card holding, sorry, a opener may or may not have a four card holding in the transfer suit, you won't necessarily know where opener singleton is, uh, especially if they've accepted the transfer which shows four cards in that suit. So if it goes, for example, if it goes two diamonds, two no trumps, that's a two-way transfer to clubs, and it's either going to be 14 plus with a two-suited hand or naught to four with a variety of different possible hands. Um, but essentially, it's most likely to be uh, a two-suited hand with clubs and the next highest suit in other words clubs and diamonds um opener is going to bid three clubs if they've got four card clubs they're going to bid three diamonds if they don't and if responders got naught to four they're going to pass whatever opener rebids um that wasn't that was a change we made last year it wasn't to make it more difficult to defend against uh it was actually just for constructive reasons for for ocp itself um, but if you're not aware of that, you can get caught out, especially if uh, responders got nothing and openers got a bare 16. Uh, if you're not prepared to come in, uh, you could end up conceding uh, a cheap sequence to ops where you've actually got something better on your way. Okay, so uh, I don't tend to play takeout doubles over an OCP two diamonds, or against it rather, um, unless I know where opener singleton is. Um, and the other thing to bear in mind with, with the OCP two diamonds is that there is absolutely no way that anybody is going to play in a contract at the two level. Um, if you stay quiet, the OCP pair will always play in at least the three level. Um, so you've got to be prepared to play that high if you want to intervene. <coughs> okay, so just, again, I don't want to spend too long on this, but Two diamonds, two hearts is just an artificial relay. It just asks opener to show their range and their shape. Um, and so opener will rebid two spades if they've got any 16 to 19. Opener would relay with two no trumps and now opener bids the suit below their singleton. Um, if opener rebids two no trumps up to and including three hearts, then that's showing 20 to 23 points. And again, they're bidding the suit below their singleton. So if you stay quiet to start with, and, and over two diamonds, two hearts, you're always going to end up finding where opener's singleton is. Okay, if, uh, and, and actually where, where that says if opener bids two spades, that should be if responder bids two spades. Sorry, my typo. So if responder bids two spades, that shows a naught to four high card points single suited hand anywhere, any particular suit, uh, definitely safe to wait and see at this point, uh, especially if you sat immediately over the two spade bid because responder is never going to, sorry, opener is never going to pass the two spade bid um, because respond, opener doesn't know where responder's long suit is. Okay, so if it goes two diamonds, two spades, showing a weak single suited hand, opener is going to bid two no trumps with any lower range hand and responder now bids their suit. If opener has uh, 
a maximum hand, they would tend to bid their shortage at the three level. Um, it's a little tweak that we call Oliver's twist. Um, and opener will now pass if opener if sorry responder will now pass if openers hit their long suit um, or correct to their suit if uh, opener hasn't hit their short suit. But either way, it's safe to pass over two diamonds, two spades. Um, and then wait for opener's rebid and see. So if opener bids something um, like two no trumps, you're going to find out where responder's suit is, and you can then start coming in in the knowledge that uh, opener is 16 to 19 and responder is 0 to 4. Uh, so you may want to start making overcalls at that stage. Similarly, if responder bids a suit at the three level to show it's normally 22, 23 points, um, now the hand that sat over responder is going to get another chance to bid, but the hand that's play that sat immediately over opener isn't going to get another chance to bid necessarily. Um, so you have to make a decision as to whether to come in or not. Okay, so I, I said before, if if it goes two dimes, two spades, and open a bid something at the three level, that will often be passed out because... Uh, most of the time you're going to find that opener will hit responder singleton. The, the odds are just with that. Um, and if that's the case, responder is just going to pass. But if it goes two dimes, two spades, two no trumps, responder is always going to bid something. Okay, so I mentioned these before. So two diamonds, the OCP two diamonds, two no trumps, up to three hearts are all two-way transfers. So again, you're safe passing over the transfer. Um, responder will most often be 0 to 4, but they can be 14 plus. If they're 14 plus, then the OCP pair are heading into an asking bid sequence, um, but they will have slam values with a 16 count opposite 14 plus. Uh, so again, if you've got a preemptive style of hand, uh, then feel free to uh, to exercise that. Um, otherwise, you may want to wait and see if the bidding dies, especially if you sat over responder, um, where again your best placed. If you sat over opener, um, again, you can get quiet, get caught out if you keep quiet uh, too long, as I said before. Okay, so I, again, the OCP two diamonds isn't there to make it awkward for you, but it does make it awkward for you, uh, especially if you sat immediately over opener. If you sat over responder, you normally end up having more options. Um, uh, we don't have a specific defense that we play against OCP, two diamonds, um, but uh, you may want to develop one that's similar to example for to Dixon, where doubles and bids by second in hand are different to those by fourth in hand because fourth in hand has more options. Okay, anybody got any questions about defending against the OCP two diamonds opening? We've covered the classic precision two diamonds. Um, 
if ops are playing multi, then there's loads of defences like Dixon out there that cope admirably with it. Uh, if the if the ops are playing the OCP two diamonds, that's a little bit uh, different. There is a version of OCP that does use a multi two diamonds, um, the complex version, um, and defending against that to hold different kettle of fish. Okay, so any questions before we move on to two clubs? Okay, moving on then. Actually, just a quick word about one no trump. Uh, I mean, your normal defense against one no trump, a precision one no trump, may suffice. Just bear in mind that a classic precision one no trump is normally 13 to 15 high card points. It's not 15 to 17. So again, you may want to consider having a penalty double available. Uh, so um, defenses such as don't and Brozel are not necessarily going to be best ever against a, a classic precision one no trump. Again, if you're playing against OCP, OCP plays a variable one no trump, and that can be 10 to 12 if ops are not vulnerable. And now you definitely need to have um, a, a penalty double available. So you may not, you may decide you don't need it against a 13 to 15, but again, Personally, I would. So you want to be playing something like cap. Um, uh, where the double is for penalties. And ones like don't and brosel where you don't have a penalty double. Personally, I would leave out if ops are playing certainly less than the 13 to 15. Um, because you need to be able to double their one no trump for penalties. But that's... Aside from that, there's no real considerations for defending against a precision one no trump that are significantly different than any other one no trump opening. Okay, so let's move on to two clubs. Um, two clubs is very easy, really, because it's essentially a natural opening. Okay, two clubs shows 11 to 15 with at least five card clubs. Uh, so your normal methods are going to work. Opener may have five card clubs and a four card major. Um, very often they'll just have six card clubs. Um, but essentially your normal natural methods are going to work against a precision two club opening. Um, okay, just one thing, and, and I mean this applies defending against one diamond as well, uh, and also potentially against I haven't mentioned one heart and one spade because, again, like one no trump, they're essentially natural openings, same as two clubs. And uh, so your normal methods will work over a major suit opening. But just a quick, okay, a quick plug for uh, Levensol, especially Levensol in competitive sequences. Um, I do do a session on that a bit later on in this series. Keep an eye out for that because uh, although it may take you quite a while to really absorb Levensol in any competitive sequence at the two level, it is worth the time that you spend on it. Um, it's a very valuable uh, weapon to have. So the idea of Levensol in competitive sequences is much the same as uh, Levensol over a, their opening one no trump, or sorry, your opening one no trump and their overcall at the two level. Um, it gives you the ability to show um, different strength bids, whether they're forcing or competitive or invitational. Um, and Levensol in competitive sequences does that just as well. Okay, so if, you, if you're intrigued by that and haven't looked at it, there is a page on Levensol on the OCP site. Uh, you're welcome to go and have a look at that. There's a document that you can download that also 
explains Levinson in competitive sequences and Levinson in other sequences that are constructive even as well that you may not have uh, come across. Um, as you might have gathered, uh, I'm a big fan of Levinson. OCP uses Levinson extensively um, in a lot of situations that uh, no other system does. Um, for example, I've mentioned OCP's approach to uh, coping with interference in asking bid sequences. Uh, Levensol is quite a big part of that, um, where I've mentioned that um, decent precision pairs have the ability to uh, make a penalty double. Uh, if you come in unwisely against OCP, um, pass can be Levensol forcing responder to double, which can then be passed for penalties. Um, worth just bearing that in mind if you're going to preempt against OCP. Okay, uh, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Levensol because it's not really what this lesson's about. Uh, if anybody's got any question on uh, defending against the relatively natural precision openings such as one heart, one spade, uh, one no trump or two clubs, then please shout up. Um, but really those are ones that, that your normal methods will probably suffice. Okay, moving on. I'm still deciding whether I'm going to use this hand that I've randomly dealt here. Um, this isn't one that I've prepared, but it's such a nice hand. Uh, I might try and work that into the discussion at some stage. Okay, and so we come to really the core of this, which is defending against the precision one club opening. Um, most of the artificial defences against precision are against the precision one club opening. They're not against any of the other openings. Uh. <coughs> okay, so uh, most people defending against precision tend to interfere as much as they can to try and disrupt the, the auction. Um, it's particularly true if you play or should be particularly true if you're playing against OCP or any super precision variation or any version of precision that's using asking bids at all. Um, uh, it's worth interfering if you can. So, as I said right at the start, pick your moment is... is my advice. If you just interfere against precision with just any old hand, without really any particular distribution um, or without an ability to preempt, all you end up doing is giving information away to the precision pair. So pick your moments. Uh, when you can deny them space, then do so. If you can't, then better just to stay quiet and let them uh, potentially make their own mistakes rather than giving them some idea about your distribution and maybe partner's distribution and guiding them to a contract that they might not otherwise have, have reached. So if you've got a weak hand that's distributional, then yes, don't pussyfoot about, use up their bidding space. And okay, there's a, an element of risk there, but if the vulnerability is right, in other words, you're not vulnerable, um, if you can consume two or three rounds of their bidding space, you can do them serious damage. But only if you've got the sort of hand that's worthwhile. I wouldn't start bidding two spades over one club with a 4 4 3 2 5 count. Uh, like I said before, 
you haven't really got the ability to compete, uh, you are inevitably giving some information away to the precision pair. Uh, I just wouldn't bother. Pick your hands. That's the, the best lesson uh, of defending against precision. So if you've got, and again, this is just reaffirming what I said right at the start. If you've got a decent hand with some distribution, you know, long suit and so on, then by all means come in and just intervene naturally. You don't need to preempt because you may be denying yourself bidding space that you and your partner need. Um, I wouldn't start preempting on a decent hand. And just bear in mind that just because one opponent's got 16 plus doesn't mean that it's not your hand and it doesn't mean that you can't necessarily bid to a game. Um, the hand we can see here is a case in point. Okay, West can make six hearts here. Um, but with East, the limit is five card hearts, but North South can make four spades against any defense. Um, because the King of Clubs is on side, the King of Spades is on side. Um, you're just going to lose three tricks in the red suits. Okay, so if you've got a decent hand, especially if, it, if it's one that's primarily defensive, by which I mean broadly balanced, I would tend just to stay quiet. If you start intervening, A, you're tipping off uh, your opponents to where most of the outstanding strength is. Um, but also, if you've got a defensive, mainly balanced hand, uh, really you want partner to bid something if, uh, if they've got a long suit. And if they're on the ball, if they've got a long suit and a weak hand, they should be bidding it anyway. Okay. Okay, lead directing overcalls are worthwhile, especially if you actually agree that simple overcalls are mainly lead directing, and some precision, some pairs defending against precision do have that agreement. Um, Jason and I used to play that. So simple overcalls, not jump overcalls, simple overcalls were mainly lead directing. Um, that can be quite useful, uh, especially when you're sat over responder underneath the one club bidder. Uh, it's more likely that the one club bidder is going to end up as the declarer in a no trump contract in which case partner is going to be on lead and so a lead directing over call can be very useful if you're sat over the one club bidder um, it's not the same because the likelihood is not guaranteed the likelihood is that you're going to be on lead against the no trump contract anyway in which case why tip them off just keep quiet and then end up leading your strong suit and uh, if you start bidding you may tip them off and allow them to avoid playing in no trumps because they don't realize that they've got a, a potential hole somewhere I keep on stressing this, but I can't, uh, I can't honestly stress it enough. If you're going to interfere, uh, on, especially on a weak hand, try and consume as much of their bidding space as you can. You know, if you've got a hand that's worth a three-level preempt, preempt at the four-level, if it doesn't seem completely insane. Um... You know, if, if need be, just go one step further than you would do normally. Um, a lot of precision pairs 
don't play very sophisticated methods for dealing with preemptive interference and they can get caught out by it because they may feel they have to keep on bidding and they're potentially going to get too high or they're going to be floundering around because they're ending up starting their sequence at the four level and they don't have the space to easily determine how far they can afford to go. Okay, so again, cheap interference that doesn't disrupt their auction just gives information away and I just wouldn't bother doing it. Okay, again, OCP thrives on cheap interference. You always end up gaining a space. Um, there's one of my favorite hands uh, that Jason and I played in a pairs competition um, where Ops made a couple of uh, doubles that they thought were just giving partner information and it ended up gaining us I think it was two and a half rounds of bidding um, those two doubles and this enabled us to get to a, a six diamond slam that hardly anybody else bid um, okay some of that was because of the constructed bids that OCP were able to use but even then, without the interference, we would have struggled to get to six diamonds. Um, but the interference allowed us to do things much more cheaply. Okay, so that's um, just a general introduction to what your tactics should be uh, over their one club. Has anybody got any questions about that before we move on to looking at a few specific defenses? Uh, against the Precision One Club opening. Please ask something. It's like, uh, it's like talking to myself, this. If you've got any questions, please ask. Don't be afraid. Um, okay. Right, I can't possibly cover all of the defences against Precision because there are literally hundreds of them. Um, uh, a lot of them share uh, um, features, but uh, um, they're all subtly different from each other. Some are more aggressive than others, and I'm going to try and give you just a sort of gentle introduction. But basically, if you if you're interested in developing um, a defense against precision go and google defense against precision and you'll get a list of the most common ones uh, I'm not making any particular claim for any of the ones I'm going to show you today uh, they're ones that I know of no question what Roger yeah I don't have any I have my own favorites a uh, favorite defenses against precision um, but uh, I don't make any claim that any one of these is any necessarily any better than others. Uh, if one of these particularly fits in with your general bidding style then, and your approach to defending, then so much the better. Okay, so the first one I'm going to look at is something called Crow Panama. Um, for years, this was actually the standard defense to precision that OCP, or what's now called OCP, uh, espoused. It's what Jason and I used to use uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but uh, these days, we tend to just let OCP pairs go their own way because um, there are other defenses that are just as good. Um, and people, pairs, OCP pairs, come up with their own preferences. And that's fine, because OCP doesn't really have any business specifying defences to OCP. Uh, it doesn't affect any other part of the system. Okay, so uh, Crow Panama is, is basically, comes in two parts, Crow Panama. Um, and again, with all these defences, bear in mind that Levensol can help you. 
uh, especially if you're using com Levinsohn in competitive sequences. Okay, so let's look a little bit at, at Crow Panama. So firstly, the Crow part of it, which is nothing to do with large blackbirds. It uh, stands for Color Rank Odd, CRO. Um, and double one no trump and two no trump show two suited hands. And it covers all of, CRO covers all of the potential combinations of two suited hands. So double shows two suits of the same color. One no trump shows two suits of the same rank. So we've now covered um, black and red, and we've covered major and minor. And two no trumps is for odd suits. In other words, round or sharp, if you are used to that uh, um, that way of thinking of spades and diamonds or hearts and clubs. So if it goes one club double, you might have the majors, you might have the minors. Sorry, you might have the red suits, you might have the black suits. And responder just has to work out which, or which they think. But similarly, ops also have to work out that. Okay, um, so CRO is, is fairly simple. Um, Simple overcalls are just just that, simple overcalls. Um, you can play them as lead directing, you can just play them as constructive, um, but they're nothing special. It's where Panama comes in is with jump overcalls. So one club, two diamonds, and upwards. <coughs> okay, Panama is a lot of fun to use. Uh, it can cause absolute havoc um, if ops aren't prepared for it. So with Panama, a jump over call either shows that suit or the other three suits with a shortage in that suit. So you've either got that suit or you haven't got that suit. And again, responder is expected to make a decision basically as to which of those two the Panama bidder has. Uh, normally, I would suggest that you assume that they've got the suit, and the only time that you remove it is if ops double, and the Panama bidder then redoubles, which is SOS. So if it goes one club, two spades, spades or not spades, and it then goes pass, pass, and opener doubles for penalties, uh, or doubles anyway, and responder redouble. Uh, sorry, the Panama bidder redoubles. Then that's saying, listen, I've got the other three suits. You decide where to go from here. Um, but if it goes one club, two spades, pass. The partner of the two spade bidder assumes that they got spades and just passes. And the only time they remove it is if two spades gets doubled. Um, if you want to play it differently, you're entirely welcome. So advancer over the, the jump over call tends to assume that they've got the weak jump over call. Um, and the uh, Panama bidder can either, if it's doubled, can redouble uh, for SOS or they can just bid the next suit up and that would show the three suitor. Um, So, I mean, I have seen Crow Panama, well, not so much Crow, but Panama uh, cause absolute havoc. Um, if you've got a precision pair who actually haven't prepared against about this kind of defense, um, you end up completely messing up, potentially, what their cubids of the suit the Panama bidder bid mean. In other words, 
if it goes one club, two spades, pass, pass, and an opener comes in with three hearts, and the partner of the one club opener now bids three spades, is that showing spades, or is that a cue bid in support of hearts? If you're not, uh, if they're not prepared, you can cause a lot of uh, a lot of havoc with Panama. Uh, it's quite good fun. Sometimes you'll go for 1100. It's true, um, but uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Okay, any questions on Crow Panama before we move on to something a little bit less insane? Okay, so let's imagine, I really want to, uh, I, I want to imagine actually here that it's West who is the dealer on this hand. So that we've got a one club opener. So this is going to be precision. So if North is playing Crow Panama, uh, he might double. Okay, so what South's going to do here over North's double is firstly they're going to choose between the black suits because they can do that. Uh, that's their preference. Um, so they're going to hope that North has got the black suits. Uh, if North then bids two diamonds, say, to show the red suits, South will then prefer hearts and just give preference to hearts. That's the idea, the way that this works. Okay. Um, So now South knows that North has got the black suit. Um, and this is looking more and more promising because all of South's points are in the black suit. And they've got a really good fit for spades. So it's looking good. I think uh, East would come in with four hearts here. Um, they might bid four diamonds because they've got the diamonds, uh, but in the knowledge that North has the black suits, um, I think they would, uh, and the fact that South didn't bid one heart over North's double, I think they'd be encouraged to bid four hearts. Um, Okay, so five diamonds is a make, um, but knowing, uh, I suspect North might pass here because they do have some defense, uh, potentially, um, and leave it up to South. At this vulnerability, bid one more, but the Singleton Diamond, um, and now you're putting it to West, because really the East-West pair, okay, West knows that East is 0 to 4. Um, but they don't have a huge idea of whether they can make six diamonds. They might think they can take five spades off. Um, so they might well sit for five spades, and five spades is a really good sacrifice, even if it's, whether it's doubled or not. 
So this is what I mean about trying to consume east-west bidding space. The three spade bid by north. North could bid four spades potentially, once south bids one spade. But they don't know that south has got the kind of really good distribution that they've got, so they might content themselves with three spades. Okay, uh, any questions? So that's going to be a very good result for north-south, potentially. Any questions? Okay, we may come back to that hand in a minute, but uh, we'll move on and look at another couple of defences. So the next one we're going to look at is uh, one called Truscott. Uh, okay. This is a safer defense to one club, but it's a lot less fun. Um, Jason and I, right back at the beginning, Jason Hackett and I, uh, we did play Trascott at unfavorable vulnerability, but we quickly ditched it in favor of Crow Panama at any vulnerability, um, just because Trascott was boring. Um, but it is simpler. Okay, so with Truscott, simple overcalls show touching two suitors with that suit and the next suit above. So one club, one heart just shows both majors. One club, one spade shows the black suits and so on. Okay, so jump overcalls. So with Truscott, there's no means of showing non-touching two suitors, i.e. sharp all round. Um, uh, so jump over calls are just weak jump over calls. So really, the only part of Truscott that are actually non-intuitive is the simple over calls. Okay, you may ask about non-touching two suitors. So Truscott uses double and one no trump for those. Um, so double shows clubs and hearts and one no trump shows diamonds and spades. So you do cover all of the potential two suited hands. Most defenses to one club do that. Uh, and they're just using different overcalls for different things. Um, you decide what fits in with your feeling of what's intuitive. Um, Truscott used to be fairly popular. I think it's not quite as popular now. But quite a few defences to one club have uh, borrowed ideas from Truscott. Even suction uh, has an element of that. Okay, next one is another even simpler one. This is very popular. Mathe is, uh, you just use double to show both majors, one no trump shows both minors, and that's it. Don't blink or you've missed it. Uh, Mathe is very, very simple. Um, difficult to go wrong, but again, you're not really denying ops much in the way of bidding space and you're not giving yourself many conventional means of interfering with their with their sequence because you've only got two suits of the same rank that allow you to actually show anything obviously you can make over calls um, but they're just natural so again if you don't want to push the boat out then methane may be for you it is a very popular defense to one club um, see a lot of people using that. <coughs> so, I mean, if you take, I mean, for example, if you were playing Mathe, all you could do with the north hand here is to bid one spade. 
just a simple overcall. And okay, that would work on this particular hand because South is going to go wild over a, an overcall of one spade. Um, but uh, on the other hand, if you were playing something like Amsbury, which we'll come to in a minute, uh, you could wreak a lot more havoc on their auction uh, by showing your black two suitor in a different way. And even suction, you could do the same, potentially. Okay, so any questions on Crow Panama, Truscott, or Mathe? Before we move on. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Suction is a very popular defense to not just one club, but also to uh, their opening one no trump. People use it against a, a strong two club opening um, quite often. But there are many different ways, or a number of different ways, of playing suction. Some are relatively simple and simple to use, but by the same token, they're relatively simple to defend against. Some versions of suction are much more difficult to use, um, much more risky, but they are also more difficult for the precision pair to defend against. I can't possibly detail all of the variations of suction if you're interested just go and google suction and you will see lists of different varieties of suction um, but I'll, I'll just outline the sort of standard idea of suction and uh, I'll mention how the others tend to differ but said there are loads okay so the idea of suction is that if you bid a suit over the one club opening at any level potentially you haven't got that suit you've either got a single suited hand with the suit above that or you've got the two unbid suits in other words if you bid one heart or two hearts or three hearts or four hearts you've either got a single suited hand with spades or you've got a two-suited hand with both minors. <coughs> so hearts is the bid that you bid. <coughs> Excuse me. The next suit up is the single-suited hand, potentially. And that gives you two other suits. And that's the two unbid suits. So you've either got a single-suited hand with the next suit up. Or you've got the two on bid suits. And the idea of suction is that partner bids what's your potential single suitor. They just transfer, treat your one heart bid as a transfer to spades. So they bid one spade, or two spades, or three spades, or four spades. Um, and if you pass that, then it's because you've got spades. And if you bid for clubs, for example, it's because you've got both minors. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's the very simple idea of suction. There is more to suction uh, than that. There are some versions. Okay, some versions of suction use a double as penalties. Um, uh, you can use one no trump to show a non-touching two suitor and again partner has to work out which and that's would be my favorite I wouldn't want to uh, use up double necessarily to show a two suited hand um, so one club one no trump could be the round suits, hearts and clubs, or it could be the sharp suits, diamonds and spades. Um, and that covers all the possibilities of single suited hands and two suited hands.
Okay, as I mentioned at the start, this version of suction is fairly easy to use, um, but it is also fairly easy to defend against in that uh, you never have the suit that you've bid, which immediately gives the precision pair a fairly easy way of defending against it because they know that uh, they can always pass and wait and see what you turn out to have. So there are other versions of suction. So um, in some, you may have the suit that you've actually bid. Or in some, you may have the next suit up or that suit and the suit above that. So in some versions of uh, suction, if you bid one heart, for example, you're either showing spades or both black suits. Or you might be showing hearts or both majors if you bid one heart. Or you might even be showing hearts or both black suits. Um, there are numerous different versions of, uh, of suction. Um, predominantly, most people you will find are playing, if they're playing suction, are playing the standard easy version. If that doesn't suit your style, then go and look at one of the more complicated ones. Any questions on suction? I'll spend a bit of time on that because it's a it's a very common. There's a lot of OCP players pairs use suction uh, against one no trump and against ops one club. Uh, it's a very popular way to go. So if uh, North-South, we're playing suction here. Um, I'll just undo this. I oh, know I can't, sorry. So if North-South are playing suction, it might go one club, say one diamond from North, which would be either showing single suited hearts or both black suits. So over one diamond, East might bid one heart, but more likely they're going to either uh, pass or double, depending on their estimation of how nice their six-card heart suit is. I'd probably bid, uh, I would probably double <coughs> over one diamond. I wouldn't give a positive. Again, South is going to Assume that partner's got the single suited heart, so they bid one heart. West might come in with two diamonds. North might now might bid two spades to show the black suits. Um, East is either going to introduce their hearts or support partner's diamonds. South is probably going to jump to four spades. And so we have a similar situation to the previous hand. Um, the previous method of bidding. But the best idea is for North-South to start consuming the bidding space. So at some stage, either North or South should be dumping to at least the four level to deny East-West the bidding space and allow them to find their um, cold six diamonds or six hearts. Six diamonds is a fairly lucky make because the Queen Ten of Hearts is coming down Six hearts by west, if they can reach it, is absolutely stone cold. Okay, any questions on suction? <coughs> Moving on. Okay, this one... Another one called Crash. Um, vaguely similar idea to CRO, actually. Crash. Um, 
Double is two suits the same colour. One diamond is two suits the same rank. One heart, one spade, and natural. Um, one no trump shows the two odd suits. So it's CRO with a twist, basically. Um, we use one diamond instead of one no trump, and one no trump instead of two no trumps. The thing about crash is that two clubs is any three suited hand, and jump over calls are natural. Um, so really, it's the uh, the double one diamond, one heart. Uh, sorry, one double one diamond, one no trump, and two club bids that are a bit different with crash. Never used it. Um, Um, definite similarities with CRO. Give it a try. Now, one of my favourites. Okay, so this is the last one I'm going to cover here. Amsbury is very similar to Panama, but it has a third option. Okay, and, and it is a, a bit like a sort of combination between suction and Panama. And the nice thing about Amsbury is that a bit like suction, you can play it at any level. So a jump over call is either single suited with that suit or three suited with the other suits. So that's the Panama bit. Or it's a touching two suitor with the two suits above the suit that you actually bid. So in other words, if it goes uh, one club, three clubs, playing Amsbury, then the three clubs is either clubs, or it's the other three suits, or it's the red suits, a touching two suitor with hearts and diamonds. Uh, Brian loves to uh, relate a story where he was playing Amsbury and managed to play in some diamond contract without a single diamond between the two hands. Ops had a 13 card diamond fit and uh, they ended up playing in some number of diamonds uh, not doubled um, and going well off but it was actually quite a good result for them I think. Went about nine off. Okay. Uh, couple of other points so another example one club two hearts would be showing either single suited hearts or it's the other three suits or it's a black two suitor so playing Amsbury on the hand shown here it might go uh, one club from west two hearts by north which would either be hearts, or it's the other three suits and not hearts, or it's both black suits. And again, Amsbury can cause havoc, a bit like Panama. So East might double two hearts to show hearts. South would bid two spades. West might be three diamonds or three hearts or um, more likely three diamonds with a seven card suit. Uh, north would probably jump to some massive number of spades. And uh, life goes on. So again, hopefully you see, you can see how you can use these defenses to show your hand um, you need to have a fairly clear example, uh, understanding rather, between you and your partner of what you're likely to have. But Amsbury is one of my favourites. So a bit like suction, you can play Amsbury at any level. As long as it's at least a jump over call. So over one club, you can play two diamonds as Amsbury, three diamonds as Amsbury, four diamonds as Amsbury. And uh, 
the only criteria really are that the, the higher you go, the more distribution you're likely to have. And again, the vulnerability plays a part there. Okay, so you will see people who, who just... It used to be that people would randomly bid one spade over one club. Um, that's actually illegal now. You're not allowed to do that. Um, according to WBF rules, but uh, it's that sort of falling into disuse a little bit. But people do psych against one club uh, quite regularly. Um, and as long as it's not fielded, then that's fair enough. Uh, some pairs just come in on, on absolutely nothing. Um, you know, you might have a 4 4 3 2 6 count. And, and you, you'll have people who show a two-suited hand. Um, and okay, it can be effective. Uh, as I said at the start, I tend not to bother unless I can really consume some bidding space. So that's my that's my philosophy there in a nutshell of uh, defending against precision. So you could use Am Amsbury against uh, Ops strong two clubs. Worth considering. So although this lesson is about defending against precision, some of these things you can use usefully um, against things like Panama and Amsbury and Suction, you can play against a strong two clubs. Um, even a Benji Akol strong two diamonds, you could use it. Okay, just another um, quick word on interfering cheaply and warning you against it. Okay, doubles in particular, I would warn you off. Um, certainly, OCP thrives on doubles. We love opposition doubling in our bids. <laughs> in the middle of an asking bid sequence because we always, always gain space. Uh, um, just to let you know, if you interfere over um, an asking bid, uh, then responder, I, or teller rather, the person answering the questions, can use double and pass as their first two steps in response to the asking bid. So you've immediately gained, if you double the asking bid, just because you've got that suit, you've immediately gained them two bidding steps. Um, so if two spades was an asking bid and you don't bid anything, then teller has got to bid two no trumps as their first step, three clubs as their second step. If you double two spades against OCP, they're going to double with a one-step response, they're going to pass with a two-step response, and two no trumps is a three-step response. So you've immediately saved them half a round of bidding by doubling. Similarly, <coughs> if you if you double over the response to an asking bid, Aska, if they're playing OCP, can double and pass to ask backwards below the the level of the last suit bid. So supposing the response to the previous ask was three clubs, or no, three spades, and you double three spades because you've got spades. Now, Asker 
can double to ask in hearts and they can pass to ask in diamonds rather than bidding um, three hearts to ask in hearts or three diamonds to ask in diamonds so you've saved them nearly a full round of bidding by doubling even if you're bidding something rather than doubling they can use the same methods to reclaim some of the space so cheap interference is something that you ought to avoid, avoid if possible, especially if uh, the pair you're playing against are, have demonstrably have some fairly sophisticated methods for doing it. Okay, so in all the, con all the conventional defenses that we mentioned, double isn't just showing that suit it's showing something specific and and that's more useful because at least you're getting some constructive use out of it um, rather than simply uh, hang on I've got a a Naomi coming to say hello got not well wife not well wife she's really struggling with her breathing I'm afraid Ellie, that there is no set standard for this. You know, uh, different pairs have different views about um, how aggressive they want to be. So there is no rule. It's not, it's, you know, there's nothing I can use to guide you. It depends on your own general approach to bidding. It's something that you need to discuss with partner. Just bear in mind that the idea is that you consume as much of your opponent's bidding space as you can. Oh. Yeah. You alright? No, I shouldn't have moved. No. Yeah. We're not well wise. Mm. Okay, Ellie, I, I can't really... Ellie says get well. She says she needs a doctor. <laughs> Oh, oxygen. Okay, well, that too. Okay, so... Um, so, there is no rule, Ellie. If you have a regular partner, it's worth having a discussion about... Because if you're both going to push the boat out, you can end up getting too high. If one of you is more aggressive than the other, then that tends to balance out a little bit. Um, but discuss, discuss it with your partner as to whether you're simply trying to disrupt or whether you're trying to have a constructive auction yourself. And that's the difference. If you're just trying to disrupt the precision pair and you don't really have any serious ambitions to actually compete seriously for the contract, then feel free to disrupt them as much as you can without leaving yourself open to a big penalty double. But uh, if you want to have a constructive auction, then yes, you need to have some clear idea on what your raises mean. If you're just trying to be disruptive, then you don't. Okay? You know, it's not like one spade, three spades is going to be a limit bit here. <laughs> okay, and I mean, it's often been said that that last paragraph there is very true. If you're playing against precision and you've got a hand where you can bid four spades over their one club opening a precision pair are almost worse off than if they were playing a natural system okay respondent knows that opener is 16 plus but he doesn't know whether they've got clubs whether they're balanced 
where they've got a big two-suited hand and you've made life really awkward for them because they're starting their investigation at the five level. So if you can do it, do it. Okay, I think that's really enough for here. We've got 25 minutes left <coughs> for some practice hands. Um, has anybody got any questions about any of the defenses that I've shown you or about any of the sort of general principles um, that I've outlined in terms of how you should be approaching interfering against either a precision club or the precision intermediate openings? Okay, in that case, could I please have four victims to sit and play a few hands? If you sit, I would ask that you agree with your partner to play one of the defences that I've outlined above. <coughs> you pick which one. Um... Please, can I have four people to sit? Don't be shy. Come on, guys. Well, if you're not going to sit, I'm going to get an early night. I'll give you due warning. I've been up since 6am this morning. I've worked the last uh, 10 days without a rest day. And I've been working 12 hour shifts for the last week. Um, I'm quite happy to get an early night. If nobody's going to sit, we're just going to stop. Okay, so be it. Guys, uh, it's been a pleasure. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Um, next week, um, just trying to remember what we've got on next week, actually. Uh, right, next week is a practice tourney. Uh, you're most welcome, Roger. Uh, next week's a practice tourney on asking bids. Okay, so... Lots of uh, uh, interesting hands. They're all going to be, not necessarily all slams, but um, they're all going to be hands where you've got a chance to uh, compete as well as try and bid constructively to uh, probably at least game. Yes, I do, Ellie. I actually have two. But one of them doesn't work very well. But I do have, uh, I do have that. I've got a blood pressure monitor. We've got um, all sorts of stuff. What we don't have uh, is a nebulizer or an oxygen tank. <laughs> um, but um, uh, anyway, right. So. Uh, Asking bid tourney next week, so no lesson as such next week. It's just a practice tourney. Do come along. Tell your friends to come along. Uh, they will all be interesting uh, and enjoyable hands. And uh, it would be nice to get uh, a decent turnout for that. Okay, guys, I'm going to get an early night. Uh, thanks for coming, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.